All right, let's do this challenging example. This is retrosynthetic analysis or commonly known as the backward method. So we are starting off with our product and we are trying to figure out what our reactants are or our starting materials. And we use this really large arrow to indicate what we are deriving from. So a good idea is to first draw our product in its uh, skeletal structure. So let me do that. Get the pen. CH3, CH2, S, CH3. So CH3, CH2, S, and then CH3. So what have we been doing in this playlist? Well, we've been doing nucleophilic substitution. So we need to make a nucleophile. So I'm just going to choose this bond right here between the sulfur and the CH3 and shift these electrons directly onto the sulfur. And I need to use this big arrow to, uh, oh, that looks bad. I'm just going to leave it like that. But let's use this big arrow to indicate what we are deriving from. So this will now be a sulfur with a unshared pair of electrons, which is a definition of a nucleophile. And we also still have the CH3, but it now has a sextet because we took both of these electrons in this bond and put them on the sulfur. So we need to attach a leaving group to make that carbon more stable. So I'm just going to choose bromine as our leaving group. So we'll have a CH3, a CH3, bound to a bromine. And we can use a normal arrow to indicate how we use these reactants to make our CH3, CH2, S, CH3. So here's our nucleophile. We'll take our unshared pair of electrons, attack that carbon because it's the electrophile, because it has that delta plus while this bromine has a delta minus. These pair of electrons will be shifted onto the bromine and we'll get something that looks like this. So that is exactly what our product is. And that is how we go from our product to find out what our reactants are. And then we have to show our reactants making our product because it's like a safe way to make sure we didn't make any mistakes. But um, we could have chose, let me erase this. We could have chose this bond right here and moved those pair of electrons onto the sulfur. If you do it this way, you'll still end up with the same product, but I'm not going to show it because it's the same exact thing I just did. So that does it for this video. I hope it helped and yeah.